Hey there, David Mason. I'm really excited. I have recorded the sound of Comet E3 ZTF using a photomultiplier electron multiplier system with circuitry of my design to enhance its sensitivity so that I could record the variable luminance of Comet E3 ZTF uh, by imaging the nucleus and coma of that comet with that technology. And so I know some of you will think, well, you can't record the sound of a comet because it's in outer space. Yes, that's true if you're trying to use microphones. I'm using a photomultiplier system with circuitry of my design and coupling that system to a large telescope so that I can record the modulated light from the comet. Now, comets, as they are approaching in the solar winds, they break apart, leaving a spectacular tail and various colors, as well as debris breaking away from that comet. And when that happens, there's fluctuations of light intensity that can be converted into sound. So without further ado, here is the video of Comet E3 ZTF that includes night vision video of this comet. display of the electron multiplier system showing the sound from the comet uh, E3 ZTF. Uh, you can see that there was quite a large amount of dynamics on the FFT spectrum analyzer and the oscilloscope. And I wasn't expecting this because I believe that comets with their massive scale and massive amounts of light fluctuation, that that process in, in abundance would effectively self-cancel and I was surprised at the dynamics that were being recorded. This is my custom engineered electron multiplier, photomultiplier console. It has adjustments for anode current and cathode voltage. It also has a built-in oscilloscope and spectrum analyzer. It provides precision high voltage to the photomultiplier tube that is attached to the telescope uh, through these cables. And the telescope is a Mead Schmidt Cassegrain 12 inch um, uh, LX200 and attached to it is the photomultiplier tube. The, the telescope was aimed at Comet E3 ZTF and aimed at the coma and nucleus. And this system was converting the modulated light from that uh, comet into sound. The video portion of this comet was recorded using this image intensifier. It's a Gen 3 Plus image intensifier system of my design. And I got the video just by putting my iPhone to the viewer of this system so we could get the actual video in real time of the comet using night vision technology. And uh, I recorded the sound on this Tascam DR701 precision audio recorder. And this was the equipment that I used for recording the sound of Comet E3 ZTF. I'm going to have to get a little bit more technical about the system that I designed because it, this is quite a remarkable thing that I'm doing that uh, many will have some questions about. So what I did was I purchased a very broad spectrum high gain photomultiplier tube that has a spectral response between 160 nanometers to 850 nanometers, and it includes the visible spectrum. The tube itself is rated at 10 million gain, and, and I designed my own circuitry within this tube, so I used uh, foil resistors instead of uh, metal film resistors to divide the dynodes, and that was to reduce noise. I um, also checked the bias between these points and I, I changed the values to maximize the gain of the tube. 
I also decoupled every dynode stage with high-grade capacitors. I built my own discrete JFET circuit to amplify the signal coming from this photomultiplier. Um, I can say that the first stage was an LSK170 JFET. And then I ran this uh, into another set of amplifiers to a high voltage power supply that controls it. And the high voltage power supply is highly filtered to reduce any noise from that power supply. And when I coupled this photomultiplier system to a telescope, I also used a field stop to reduce the field of view to four arc minutes to make sure that I didn't incorporate other stars in the field of view. I didn't want to make the field of view too small because then you'll incorporate um, atmospheric turbulence or scintillation from the atmosphere. And if you go too wide, you'll incorporate other stars. And to my surprise, when I set this system up, it worked. I was able to record comet E3 ZTF, the nucleus and coma breaking up. And the sound was unique. It had a um, low frequency rumble that was in the audio spectrum and below audio spectrum. It was showing up on the FFT analyzer as being unique and not the same as dark current noise within a photomultiplier tube and not the noise that we would get in background noise from electronic circuitry. So very unique. And I was really shocked that it worked on the first go around. And so I repeated the experiment on another night and I was able to replicate the uh, photo anode current on the uh, photomultiplier to see if I'm going to get the same results. And the following uh, experiment, I was not able to get the sound. And I thought that was a real surprise. I couldn't figure out what it was, but it certainly confirmed that it was not atmospheric scintillation. And then I tried on a third uh, attempt, could not get the sound of the comet. And I believe what was happening was on January 29th, when I recorded the comet, it was emitting a fluctuation in large plumes of ultraviolet light. Since this system I had been using on this comet has an extended ultraviolet uh, sensitivity. And this is something I don't believe anybody's done before. I haven't been able to find any information where somebody's taken light from a comet and converted it into sound. I know that NASA has done an experiment where they took the magnetic field from a comet and then sped it up so we could hear pulses, but it was actually subsonic. It was out of the audio spectrum, so it was sped up. I did not change the sound of the recording. I did scoop out the uh, 60 cycles frequency and 120 cycles frequency because there was a great amount of light pollution that was being detected on the system. And it was overbearing on the sound, at least it was annoying to me. So I just scooped it out with an equalizer, but I did not change the speed or tamper with it in any way, uh, trying to preserve the original content of the recording. So what this means is that if this is an occurrence that's happening with comets, it can become a valuable scientific tool to enhance our understanding of comets because comets can you know, tell us a lot about our universe uh, and they can also be a, a threat to us if they're um, going to come as an impact to us. So we need to understand more about them, whether they're just an icy snowball or a big rock with just a little bit of ice on it and so that we can take any kind of evasive action needed to uh, to stop such a thing but i yeah i hope you enjoy the following part of this video um, some of you may know me from working on the tv series um, the secret of skinwalker ranch i've, I've worked in several episodes uh, working with my inventions and uh, it including clear cameras that i re-engineered the transfer function so that it would work with um, differential temperature measurements and also the movie A Terror in the Sky with William Shatner. You can see some of my inventions also uh, being used in that movie. Now, I'm not trying to promote this system as I'm not trying to gaslight it as a uh, something to market or, or promote off the money of it or anything. I'm just showing this is what I've recorded from Comet E3 ZTF. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this uh, video of the Comet. And thanks for watching.